um, what's that space uh, space ninja mech game? Um, uh, Warframe. I believe Warframe is free to play. Um, yeah, there's a ton of free to play games as long as you don't mind wasting your time. <laughs> And that's kind of the trade-off. Like, I feel like most of the games... We'll get into my, my philosophy. Well, we'll just get into it now. So my philosophy of gaming, I believe that games are fun because they... Because you think that you are learning something valuable at a deep discount. Uh, by playing a game, you don't have to engage with all of the risks of doing the activity, but you can still learn some of the skills associated with the activity. So this is one of the reasons that first-person shooters are so popular, because you feel like you're learning how to engage with modern combat uh, without having to risk your life, and buy a gun and buy ammunition and go somewhere where you could shoot it. All that stuff gets abstracted away, or not abstracted away, but gets, uh, yeah, it does basically get abstracted away, but it gets distanced from you. You're, you're buffered from that. You're, you're distanced from it. You're, um, you're protected. And so you can feel like you're learning how to engage with modern combat without being, having to risk your life doing so. So like combat games, one of the reasons why they're so fun, people are like, oh, it's so terrible and violent. No, 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 that's the whole point. The point is that you can engage with violence without having to risk your life and without having to kill other people. So like if they are accurate or if they are truly informing you, then they are good games. Uh, so my philosophy of games is they're fun because you're learning something valuable that you would have to pay a high cost for in real life, whether monetary or time or, uh, you know, like space, Kerbal Space Program. Really fun game because, oh, you learn about orbital mechanics without having to actually build a rocket or go to school to learn all the specifics of the math. You can just learn it intuitively by playing the game. So Kerbal Space Program, really great game. Um, a bunch of these games, you know, very good games because they're teaching you something real about how the world works without you having to engage with a very costly activity of doing the thing itself. Um, so like combat games and uh, games about like city building and stuff, right? Super, super expensive tasks, uh, things like that. Space exploration, all these things, you know, the really hard things to do in real life, you can do in a game and it's fun because you're, you're telling yourself that you're learning something valuable. Now, the problem is if a game is lying to you about that, which is what gambling does. Gambling is where the, the game says you're learning how to navigate this complex system. It's so complicated that you can't detect a pattern, but there's a pattern there, but there isn't a pattern there. It's actually just random. That's what gambling is. So gambling feels like you're learning something about this super complicated system. It's like, oh, if I do this thing and I do that thing and I wear these special socks and I come on this day and I, I, give, I bet this amount on this money on this thing and then I switch my bet to this amount on that thing, then, oh, and I can see the pattern in this random noise, but it's actually just random noise. There is no pattern to be seen. You're being fooled by your own pareidolia, which is your ability to see patterns in, in random noise. And so gambling is terrible because it's a lie. It's a lie. It tells you you're learning something valuable when you're really not actually learning anything at all. You're just you're just listening to white noise. You're just looking at static on the TV screen and imagining that you see patterns there. So the great thing about, ga about gaming is you can learn something really valuable uh, with way lower cost in terms of time, effort, and uh, money and risk than it would be to learn that same thing in real life. Uh, downsides of gaming is if you are unable to or choose to corrupt your own ability uh, to sense when you're being lied to, then you will become trapped in a system that is purely noise or that is not teaching you anything useful. And that is what almost all free-to-play games are. That is what Roblox is, for the most part. Uh, that is what World of Warcraft is, for the most part. Um, that is what Genshin Impact is, for the most part. Again, like a lot of these games, there are some valuable things in it, um, but for the most part, they're just gambling. They're just random noise. They're just random white noise on the, on, you know, static on the TV screen. 
They are not teaching you anything valuable. They're not being truthful with you about what you are doing. So that's my philosophy of gaming. Gambling, horrific offense to truth and veracity. Real gaming, where you're learning something valuable at a, at a much discounted cost, super valuable and super great. So like Kerbal Space Program, really cool. World of Warcraft, mostly garbage. I mean, the World of Warcraft, there are some aspects to it where you're coordinating with people and doing some Simon Says kind of stuff, uh, but they're the kind of like third grade thing that anybody could do. Like it's not actually super skill heavy. And the stuff that is super skill heavy is artificially skill heavy. It's not teaching anything useful. It's just teaching how to engage with the game itself. So anyway, yeah. There's my rant on game design, game development, and what gaming is about, and all that stuff. Destiny 2. Yeah, Destiny 2 is not teaching you anything real about combat, space exploration, anything. Uh, or are you saying Destiny 2 is a, a real game that's really good because it's teaching you something valuable? I don't know. I've, I've never played Destiny 2. I always felt like... So I feel like the first-person shooters are kind of on a borderline between between useful and not useful. On the one hand, real combat is extremely dangerous to engage with, and so anything that you can learn about it in a game could be really useful if you do ever have to go into combat. Um, fortunately, Lord willing, the likelihood of having to engage with actual modern combat for any individual who has free time to play video games is probably pretty low. Um, I would have to talk to my brother, actually. He was in the military. He was in the army and went over to Afghanistan for a while. Um, if he feels like any of his first-person shooter gaming experience helped him to... or, or hindered him in his actual combat, uh, I don't I don't know. I, I've never been in combat myself, so I don't know if it would be helpful or not. But I feel like it's probably mostly a lie. Uh, because, like, sitting at your computer, moving your hand around like this and pushing keys is a very different experience from actually carrying a firearm, being under fire, uh, experiencing trauma and shock and uh, sustained stress over long periods and you know, carrying heavy things. It's just like, it's, it's an extremely different experience. So like the engineering games I feel are, are actually very much more close to real life, even if they're weird abstracted versions of real life, because learning how to deal with complex systems in an abstracted way, take something apart, take apart a problem and solve it, put it back together and see it all work is something that's very applicable to real life in engineering. Whereas first person shooter stuff, even though the costs are much higher in terms of life and danger, uh, I don't think that they they develop transferable skills in the person who plays them. So, like Destiny 2, Call of Duty, all those games. Again, I don't have any first-hand experience, but my intuition is that they're closer to gambling than they are to Kerbal Space Program. Uh, 